today is healing Sunday. Today is healing Sunday. Today is healing Sunday. Today is your day to be healed. Today is your day to be made whole. He looked at the woman with the issue of blood. He said, daughter, your faith has made you whole. The power is always available. But is there someone that has faith? Is there someone that believes? Is there someone that will say, that belongs to me? Lift your hands with the Holy Spirit. Oh, even now. Even now you're moving in this room. Even now you're walking among the people. Even now the heavens are open. Even now the rain is pouring down on your people. Even now, Father God, you're addressing, Father God, issues. God, even now, Father God, you're touching ligaments, you're touching bones. Even now, Father God, you're touching the mind. God, even now you're touching hearts, oh God. Even now you're touching muscles, God. You're touching joints, Father God. Even now, Father God, you're touching internal organs, oh God. Even now, God, you're addressing high blood pressure. Even now, God, you're addressing, Father God, imbalance of hormones. Even now, Father God, you are addressing irregularity, God. Even now, Father God, you're addressing cancer, oh God. Even now you're addressing AIDS, oh God. Even now you're addressing Giants, oh God. Even now, even now, God, I thank you because we release your word in this atmosphere and we will draw and have faith for everything, everything, everything that was purchased for us on the cross of Calvary, oh God. And we adore you. Jesus, you're the healer. Jesus, you're the way maker. Jesus, you're the deliverer. Jesus, you are Alpha. Jesus, you are Omega. Jesus, you're the beginning. Jesus, you're the end, Mama. Teach us how to us to set an atmosphere of oh, faith, Father God, to deliver her love and share. Everything that belongs to the children of God. Everything that belongs to the children of God. Everything that belongs to the children of God. We will not live without. We will not live going without. We will not live in depression. We will not live in sickness. We will not live in lack. We will not live in sin. We will not live in poverty. We will not live being overwhelmed. But we will live in joy, in peace, in overflow, in provision. We will live in the kingdom. We will live long, prosperous, healthy lives. We will live, Father God, free from sin. We will live the abundant life that Jesus purchased for us. We will. We will. We will. We will. We adore you. 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 Sit down right where you are. God, I thank you. God, I thank you. God, I thank you. We're going to address our worship in the area of giving towards the end of service. So you can sit right where you want to. You can sit on the floor. You can sit on the wall. You can sit in the chair. I don't care. You can go wherever you want to go. I believe in the power of God. I believe in the Holy Spirit. I believe in the word of God as being God's final authority. I believe that we don't see more miracles, signs, wonders, and healing. Because faith has not arisen in the heart of people. Because pastors are afraid to preach it. Pastors are afraid to bring the word of healing. Pastors are afraid. They say, well, what if I bring it? See, we've been talking about the blood of Jesus for the past two Sundays. We've been talking about redemption that comes through the blood. We've been talking about the forgiveness of sin that comes through the blood. We've been talking about how we can come into the presence of God through the blood of Jesus. But do you not understand that also through that blood, your healing was purchased. There's something about the blood of Jesus. There's something about what happened on that cross. There's something about the blood. When the blood came streaming down, when it came streaming down, there are things that have been made available to the people of God. So it is not God's heart and desire for you to live sick. It is not his desire for you to be without. It is not his desire for you to be in lack. But somebody has to preach it. How will they know if no one preaches it? How will they know if no one declares it? How will they know if nobody opens their mouth and releases what the word of God says? How can people know what to believe? If no one will preach the word of healing How will someone be saved If no one preaches the word of salvation How will no one be delivered If nobody preaches the word of deliverance When word, when the word comes forth Faith arises in the heart of people And that is how people are able to believe So why don't we see miracles Why don't we see healing Why? Because nobody's preaching
preaching and if no one preaches it, then the people don't have the opportunity to believe. But this morning, somebody say, we believe. We believe. We believe. It's not, uh, it's not, um, it's not voodoo. It's not magic. It's the word. And the same word that saves you is the same word that has the power to heal you. It's the same word that has the power to deliver. It's the same word. So when your pastor says, it's healing Sunday, then somebody needs to be in agreement to say, you know what? It is healing Sunday. Because the word of God says that we're two or three are gathered in his name. He is in the midst. Who is he? Jesus. Jesus is in the midst. And you got to get to the point in your relationship and in your walk with God. That when things try to get on your body and things try to get on your soul and things try to get on your mind, that you start looking at that thing like it's an alien. Don't you accept it because of age? Don't you accept it because, well, my mama was sick of high blood pressure, so I guess I have to be sick of high blood pressure. The devil is a liar. All of that was crucified on the cross of Calvary. High blood pressure was crucified on the cross of Calvary. Heart disease was crucified on the cross of Calvary. Breast cancer was crucified on the cross of Calvary. And let me tell you, when it was crucified, when Jesus got up, breast cancer did not get up with him. High blood pressure did not get up with him. Dementia did not get up with him. Alzheimer's did not get up with him. Menstrual issues did not get up with him. So if you allow that to stay in your body without addressing it, then you are allowing that death to be present in you. But I believe that there's a people. I believe that there are children and daughters and sons of the Most High God that will look at themselves and say, "Ah, uh -uh, you are not allowed here. You are an illegal alien. I speak to my body and I command you to line up with the Word of God. I declare the Word of the Lord over my body right now, and I will receive everything that God has for me. So sickness, no sir. Sickness, no sir. I'll return to sender. I put a stamp on that package. You try to deliver that package to me, but I will not receive it. I will not accept it. I don't care how long I've been believing." I don't care how long I go to believe in God for my healing. I will stand believing, declaring in the name of Jesus. By His Christ, I am, I am, I am, I am. Not I will be, not I might be, but I am, I am healed. Somebody say it's healing Sunday. It's healing Sunday. It's healing Sunday. You don't even have to wait for me to pray for you. You can begin to receive your healing right now. Because Jesus is here right now. Where faith is alive in the heart of the people, Jesus is here right now. If you believe in your heart and you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, you are saved. If you confess with your heart, with your mouth and believe in your heart that you are healed, the process has already begun. The process has already begun. And we're going to declare and believe a manifestation this way. Because it's healing Sunday. It's healing Sunday. It's healing Sunday. We have to be bold to declare the word of the Lord. You can't be scared. You can't be nervous. You got to stand on God's word. Why have you been prospering this year? How many of you have noticed a change in your, in your financial state this year? Why? Because we've been eating on the word every Tuesday and we've been learning prosper God's way, prosper God's way, prosper God's way. And I've been telling you, uh, make sure that your life is in obedience. And I've been telling you, get in covenant with God through tithing and offering. And I've been telling you, be a good steward. And I've been telling you, get your Jesus hustle on, right? And put your hands to work to something so that he has something to bless. But you're doing it and you're mixing it with faith and you're believing because I've been preaching it to you over and over and over again. And every time I receive the offer, I'm talking about it and I'm sowing faith into your heart. I'm sowing the word of God and there's somebody under the sound of my voice, somebody connected to Rainfire Church, be it online or in the house that is saying, yes, I believe that word for me. Yes, I will not live in lack. Yes, I will overflow. Yes, I will have my business. Yes, I will prosper. Yes, I have abundance and it has my name on it. Yes, and there's the same people that learn how to believe God for finances, that will learn how to believe God for healing and you'll learn how to believe God for breakthrough, you will come to the point where you understand that you're not a victim of life. You don't have to just stand for whatever life throws at you, but you have authority in the name that is above every name. You can look at any situation and you can prophesy to it and you can command it to line up with 
the will of God, to line up with the word of God. You don't have to be a victim. You don't have to lay down and take it. You don't have to be stuck in any situation. But you can praise your way out. And you can give your way out. And you can worship your way out. And you can declare your way out. And you can obey your way out. See, I came this morning with my heart full of faith. I came this morning with expectation. I came this morning knowing who my God is. I came this morning knowing that there's nothing impossible for Him. I came this morning understanding that we can speak to goyers and we can speak to cancer and we can speak to deaf ears and command them to be open in the name of Jesus. But will somebody believe? Will somebody have faith? Will somebody put a demand on the glory of God and say, no more will I suffer because it's not the will of God for me to suffer. It's not the will of God for me to be sick. It's not the will of God for me to be confused. It's not the will of God for me to be in lack. But it is the will of He said, I have come that you might have life and have it. He already did what he needed to do. The sacrifice has already been made. He already went to the cross. He already went to the grave. He already poured out his blood. And the power is available. But some people just don't know it. So he says, Joanne, open your mouth and declare it so the people will know and have the opportunity to believe. Come on, let's go to the word of God because that's where the miracle begins. It begins in the word of God. The miracle begins in the word of God. The miracle does not begin with what I say. The miracle begins with the word of God. Holy Spirit, we dedicate this service to you. I thank you for the worshipers. I thank you, Father God, for the ushers. I thank you for the deacons. I thank you for security. I thank you for the, those that are working with the children. I th thank you for those that serve in audio and media. And, 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 the, and so, God, I thank you, God, that we're all in one spirit and we're all in one mind and we're all in one accord this morning so that your glory can flow through this house. The word of God says in Exodus 15, verse 22, we were talking about also, Moses last week, and we were talking about the Passover, and we were talking about the blood of Jesus that was put up on the lamppost. Do you realize that when the people of Israel, come on, listen with a heart full of faith. When the people of Israel came out of Egypt, there was not one sick among them. They don't even realize that when they sat there and they ate the Passover lamb, as they sat there and they put the blood of the lamb on their doorpost and the angel of death went on over them and they were protected as they sat there and followed the instructions of the Lord their God. And they, they ate that lamb that represented Jesus Christ. As they were eating the Passover, their bodies were being healed. Their bodies were being prepared for the trip across the desert. It says that there was not one sick or feeble among them. They had 80 year olds and 70 year olds and 65 year olds and they had those that had been beaten and maybe those had lost a foot or those that were crippled. But you know what? When they came out, they were not sick. So you have to know when the enemy is at work in your body. You got to know when the enemy is at work in your mind. You have to know when he's at work in your money. You got to know and you got to be able to have a radar you got to have a radar on. And, and whenever you sit back and you just say, oh, well, I guess this is just what life is going to be. You're allowing him to say, but you got to have that radar on. Say, no, 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 no. Wait a minute. Um, you do not belong here. You do not belong in my body. You do not belong in my mind. You don't belong in my money. I cast you out in the name of Jesus because you have to understand. See, did he go to the cross in vain? Because if we don't, if we do not take advantage of what has been provided for us. For all intents and purposes, he went in vain. Look at this. Let's look at the word of God. Exodus 15, verse 22. It says, So Moses brought Israel from the Red Sea. And then they went out into the wilderness of Shur. And they went three days in the wilderness and found no water. Now when they came to Marah, they could not drink the waters of Marah, for they were bitter. Therefore the name of it was called Marah, which means bitter. And the people complained against Moses saying, what shall we drink? So he cried out to the Lord and the Lord showed him a tree. When he cast it into the waters, the waters were made sweet. 
So they, they, they've been going three days without water. You know how it feels to just go 12 hours without water. They went three days without water. They find water and they cannot drink the water because the water is bitter. Moses cries out to the Lord. The Lord shows him and reveals him, not just any tree, but a specific tree. They pull from that tree. They throw it in the water and miraculously, because God is the God of the impossible. So we have to understand that there is nothing impossible for the one that can say, let there be light and there is light. There is nothing impossible. So everything that seems impossible to us, because we go, what rhyme or reason is there for you to put some, ram, some some parts of a tree into water and suddenly the source of water goes from being bitter to being sweet. No, we're talking about the God that just says, do what I tell you to do and you're going to see what I told you is going to happen. In the same way that Jesus told the disciple, I feel like a real preacher this morning. And Jesus said to the disciple, he said, go and pull out a fish. And when you open the mouth of the fish, you're going to find money and go to the temple and pay your taxes and mine. We're talking about the God that said, bring me the loaves and bring me the fish. And now I, I, he blessed it and he broke it. And as he began to break it, what, there was how many baskets left over? How do you get 12 something baskets of leftover food when you started with just a few loaves of fish and just a few pieces of bread? Why? Because he is the God of the impossible. He is the God that makes a way out of no way. He, we have to know who he is and we have to begin to expect him to be who he is in our lives. Stop thinking of him as a little genie. Stop thinking of him as a little genie in the bottle. Stop thinking of him as a little God. Stop thinking of him as a God that has limitations. He has no limit. Oh, well, I've had cancer for too long. I've had fibroids for too long. But let me tell you, he can speak one word and your faith can be made active. And your faith will just suddenly grab a hold of that word and say, wait a minute, enough is enough. And suddenly, boom, you receive that thing that you believe God for. He said, cast the tree into the water. And the water was made sweet. And they were able to drink. Look at God. And there he made a statue and an ordinance for them. And there he tested them and said, if you diligently heed the voice of the Lord your God and do what is right in his sight. See, I keep always taking you back to relationship. I keep always taking you back to obedience. I keep taking you back to surrender. I keep taking you back to personal responsibility in your relationship with Jesus. Okay, yes, we're all human, but at some point we got to cut out the excuses and we got to allow the Holy Ghost to help us do better. He said, heed the voice of the Lord your God and do what is right in his sight. How much more now that we're in a better covenant and we have the help of the Holy Spirit. We don't have Jesus just on the outside of us, but we have Jesus living, living, living and breathing on the inside of us with resurrection power. He said the kingdom is within you. The kingdom of God. God is within you. So at some point, we have to stop making excuses and we got to start tapping into that Jesus that's on the inside of us. He said, give ear to my commandment. Do what is right in my sight and keep all of his statutes. And look at this. I will put none of the diseases on you which I brought on the Egyptians. And this is the statement. This is the sentence. This is the, the, the anchor that declares something about Jehovah God that they did not know. For I am the Lord who heals you. So you have to understand that to them, they were just getting to know this Jehovah. See, they didn't have the relationship with him that Abraham had with him. They didn't have the relationship with him that Isaac had with him. They didn't have, they had been in slavery for 400 years. They had been beaten for 400 years. They had been hungry for 400 years. They had died and suffered for 400 years. They had been treated like dogs for 400 years. They probably did not even have the capacity to understand what it meant to be God's chosen people. They couldn't even understand it. They couldn't even wrap their head around the concept of God's chosen people. So God has to make statements to them to help them understand who he is. When Moses encountered him at the burning bush, he said, when I go to Pharaoh, what am I supposed to say? And he said, say, I am sent you. Because even Moses had to come to know him. He didn't know him. They had to build their relationship. Some of you are in that same place right now. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Or you don't know him. You may have been in church all your life, but you don't know him. Because if you knew him, you wouldn't accept in your life what you're accepting. If you knew him, you wouldn't think it's okay for you to be sick. If you knew him, you wouldn't be okay being without. If you knew him, you would not settle for being confused. You, if you knew him, see, if you really knew him the way we should know him, then you wouldn't allow people's attitude to stop you from coming to the house of God. You would say whatever. You can trip if you want to. You can cut up if you want to. You can act a 
a fool if you want to, but I understand where God has called me to be. I understand where the word of God is coming forth. I understand where worship is strong. I understand where the spirit of God is and where the spirit of the Lord is. There is liberty. So I'm not going to let you with your funky attitude in the parking lot stop me from coming into the house of God because I know who my God is. I know where he has set me. I know where there's a word that has been designated for progress in my life. And he said to them, for I am the Lord. I am the Lord that heals me. So anyone that says to you, healing is not for today, walk away. Don't accept that. Don't listen to people on YouTube talking about healing is not for today. They're lying. The devil is speaking through them to rob from you the miracle that God has for you. It was already paid for and it was already provided. It was already provided. It was already provided. He declared to the people, this is who I am. And according to the word of God, the word of God says that he is the same yesterday, today, and forever. God, I thank you. Yesterday, today, and forever. Even as I listen and I prepare uh, this message, there have been different health challenges that I have been dealing with, e either with my knees or whatever. You've heard me mention it before. And you know what? I don't stop believing. Why? Because I'm not going to allow the devil to take residence in my knee or in my leg to where I can't worship, I can't dance, I can't run, I can't shout, I can't exercise, I can't be effective. If I accept that, then it will stay and get worse. But when I begin to reject it, when I activate my faith, when I declare, when I believe God, when I just receive it, then now God has something to work with. Because guess what? He's just waiting for you to activate your faith. He's waiting for you to just believe. He's waiting for you to say, yes, you are my healer. I was teaching on Tuesday and there's a scripture that says, and they heard the word, but it did not profit them because they did not mix the word with faith. So you can hear a word and it not profit you. But when you take that extra step and you say, you know what, against all odds, I'm going to believe God. And you know how to come into the house of God and say, God, let the spirit of faith arise in my heart because faith is a spirit. Faith is not a state of mind, but faith is a spirit. And you can activate the spirit of faith. Sometimes I'm listening to preachings and I'm saying, God, allow the faith that is connected to this word to arise in my heart. I don't want to just have head knowledge, but I want to know in my spirit and in my heart that the word that is coming forth is truth. And when you believe, action happens. See, in a little while, we're going to pray. We're going to pray for the sick. So when you lay hands on yourself, on yourself, and you put your hand on the part of your body that's bothering you, faith will say, receive it, declare it, but then action, begin to move that thing, begin to see where, ah, uh -uh, no pain, and you keep, no, Jesus is here, Jesus' hand is on my back. Uh -uh, I'm walking out of here pain free in the name of Jesus. And you begin to move and you begin to, why? Because you're activating your faith. You're saying, come on faith, kick in. That's, you got to kick in that power. I know that the power is available. I know that I believe because in your word you said, I am the Lord who heals you. Let's go to John 5 and you can just write down the, the references. You don't have to go there. I'll read it to you. God, this made me so excited this morning. Chapter 5 of John says, after this, there was a feast of the Jews, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Now there is in Jerusalem by the Sheep Gate a pool, which is called in Hebrew Bethesda, having five porches. In these lay a great multitude of sick people, blind, lame, paralyzed, waiting for the moving of the water. Even as I was on the road yesterday, I kept saying, God, send the angel to stir the water and rain fire church. Send the angel of healing to stir the water and rain fire church. And I know that he's doing it even now. And there were great multitude of sick people. For the angel would come down at a certain time into the pool and stir the water. Then whoever stepped in first after the stirring of the water was made well of whatever. Somebody say whatever. Whatever disease. Whatever disease he had. And now a certain man was there who had an infirmity 38 years. Thank you, Charles. You have to learn how to get in the water. You don't have to wait for healing Sunday to be healed. 
but I'm, I'm but I, I'm le- I'm following the leading of the Holy Spirit to push you into that place of faith. To believe for yourself on Monday. It can be healing Monday and healing Tuesday and healing Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, all the way to the next time we have a healing Sunday. Why? Because the word is alive in you. This man was sick for 38 years. He sat by this pool for 38 years. He saw people get in sick and come out healed for 38 years. Jesus, don't tell me you've been sick too long. I find the devil. I bind every negative thought. I bind every thought that will say, well, that doesn't apply to me. Yes, it does apply to me. 38 years. And when Jesus saw him lying there and knew that he had already had been in that condition a long time, he said to him, do you want to be made well? Do you want? Yes. Do you have a desire to be healed? Sometimes we're dealing with sickness in our body and we don't even know enough to have a desire to be healed. That's it. That's why you have to be able to look at your body and say, wait a minute. You don't belong here. Diabetes, you don't belong here. I'm not telling you to stop taking your insulin. I'm not telling you to stop eating right. I'm not to, but I am telling you to take a spiritual posture. I am telling you to get aggressive. In your declaration. I am telling you to get aggressive in your attitude of faith. To say every day. To take a big old printout of a scripture of healing. And put it on your mirror. And every day that you wake up and you brush your teeth. And you say today is going to be a good day. And I declare in the name of the Lord Jesus. Oh Father that even in Exodus. You said I am the Lord. That is your healer. So God I activate that word. And I command every spirit of diabetes. To get out of my body. And I don't care how long it takes. But God I thank you. Because my faith has already made me whole. And you say it, and you say it, and you say it, and you believe it, and you walk in obedience, and you watch what comes out of your mouth, and you take care of yourself, and you believe it, and you worship, and you declare it, and you praise God, and you speak over your body. And I'm going to tell you, the day is going to come where you're going to go to the doctor, and he's going to say, what have you been doing? Because you're doing great. What have you been doing? You're healthier than you've been in years. What have you been doing? Why? Because he is. He is a healer. There is a balm in Gilead. Father, I thank you. He said, do you want? Is there anybody here this morning that wants to be made well? Do you want to be made well? The sick man answered him, sir, I have no man. He didn't ask you about if you had a man or if you had no man. He said, sir, I have no man to put me in the water when the angels serve. That is not what he asked you. He said, do you want to be made well? He didn't ask you what you don't have. He didn't ask you about somebody else putting you in the water. He said, do you have a desire to be made well? Because he didn't even know who was asking him the question. The resurrection and the life was asking him the question. The great I am was asking him a question. The healer of all nations was asking him a question. The one that would shed his blood for the world was asking him a question. You're going to talk to me about I ain't got no man to put me in the water. That's not what I asked you. God, I thank you. See, sometimes God will come to you and say, do you want to prosper? And you say, well, I don't have a job. That's not what I... But when I'm coming, 
another steps down before me. When I'm coming and I'm trying to grab my miracle, somebody gets to it before I do. When I'm coming, somebody's just moving faster than I am. When I'm coming, somebody steps into the water and they get the breakthrough before I get the breakthrough. And God is like, I'm not asking you that. And Jesus just said to him, listen, I'm not even going to answer your question. I'm not going to even entertain the conversation that you're trying to have with me. Jesus basically released the word because the power is in the word. When the word is released and faith grabs a hold of that word and you just believe, you you ain't got to rah, bah, 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 shanda. You ain't got to go fast over it. You just have to receive it. Even today, as we pray for the sick, you don't have to worry about rah, bah, 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 bah. No, you just lift your hands and you put your hand on your body and you just receive. Somebody just say, I receive it. I receive it now. I receive healing in my body now. I receive step in the water now. I receive healing in my mind now. I receive healing in my joints now. I receive healing in my back now. I receive it now because I don't have to bow. Look at the man. He said, What? He said, Rise. One word. Rise. Why do we have to make it so complicated? Why do we, we feel like, okay, for me to go and pray for the sick, I got to fast 40 days and 40 nights, and I got to go and, 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 and bathe myself with oil 43 times, and I got to go. I, I know. Are you living in holiness? Do you love God? Are you being obedient to His word? That's just being a basic Christian. That's just being a follower of Jesus Christ. If you just are being a basic Christian and a follower of Jesus Christ, he said, if you love me, do what I tell you to do, follow my commandments. So guess what? You're a candidate even to go and to preach the gospel. You don't have to have a title. He said, you lay hands on the sick and they will recover. He said, these signs will follow them that what? Believe. He said, arise. Take up your bed and walk. And immediately the man was made well, took up his bed and walked. Just listen. First Peter 2.24 says, Who himself bore our sins in his own body on the tree, that we having died to sins might live for righteousness, by whose stripes you were healed. Isaiah 53 verse 5 says, But he was pierced for our transgression. He was bruised for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was on him, and by his wounds we are healed. Matthew 4 23, And he went throughout all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues, proclaiming the gospel of the kingdom, and healing every disease and every Every affliction among the people. Every disease and every affliction among the people. And then he said, you shall do greater works. Psalms 103 verse 1 to 5. Praise the Lord my soul. All my inmost being. Praise his holy name. Praise the Lord my soul and forget not all his benefits. Who forgives all your sins and heals all your diseases. Who redeems your life from the pit and crowns you with love and compassion. Who satisfies your desire with good things so that your youth, he'll even keep you young. Come on somebody. So that your youth is renewed like the eagles. James 5 verse 14 and 15 says, is anyone among you sick? Let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith, the prayer of faith, the prayer of faith, the prayer of faith, if somebody would just believe, the prayer of faith will save the one who is sick and the Lord. Now, Joanne, not the bishop. What we do, we do in the name of the Lord. And the Lord will raise them up. Even as I was meditating and I know and I was praying this morning, it's like I heard the Lord say, Joanne, just relax. He said, Because I produce the healing. I produce the miracles. It's in my name. I do the work. All you have to do is release the word and I do the work. All you have to do is release the word and someone will believe and I do the work. That's why we give all glory and honor to Jesus. Father, I thank you. And look at this, Matthew 10 verse 1. And he called to him his 12 disciples and gave them authority over unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal every disease and every affliction. Mark 16. And these signs will follow those who believe. In my name they will cast out demons. They will speak with new tongues. They will take up serpents and if they drink anything deadly, it will by no means hurt them. And they will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. 
verse 19, one of my favorite scriptures in the whole Bible. So then, after the Lord had spoken to them, he was received up into heaven and sat down at the right hand of the Father. And they went out and preached everywhere. The Lord working with them and confirming the word through accompanying signs. Lift your hands right now in the presence of the Lord. And the Lord worked with them. This morning, the Lord is working with me. This morning, the Lord is helping me. This morning, the Lord is opening the heavens. This morning, the Lord is working with me. And he has stirred up your heart to believe. And in faith, right now, put your hand on that part of the body that you have been having trouble. I don't care if it's like, if you've been having heartache, then put your hand on your heart. If you have an issue in your mind, then put your hand on your mind. If you have an issue with your bones, with your back, with your shoulder, wherever it is, oh, stir up faith in your heart as I get ready to release the word of God in this house. Because faith, ah, is the substance of the thing that is hoped for. And it is the evidence of the thing that is not seen. And even this morning, they will be confirming testimonies of the healing power of God so that your faith will go up to another level. Lord Jesus, oh, I thank you right now that you are in this place. I thank you right now that you release the word over us. I thank you right now that the Lord, huh, we are getting to know today Jehovah Rapha, our healer. We declare, Jesus, that you are in this room and you are healing right now. I speak to every spirit of sickness. I speak to every pain. I speak to every spirit of infirmity. I speak to every demonic spirit that comes to destroy the people of God from sickness. And I curse you right now. In the name of Jesus, be made whole. In the name of Jesus, be free from pain. In the name of Jesus, be healed in the presence of God. In the name of Jesus. And now, even as I'm releasing the word of God, don't pray. Don't intercede. Just say, I receive it. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. And now that place where you have pain, begin to move it. Begin to move it. Begin to move it. Begin to move it. Just thank Him. Just thank Him. Just thank Him. Just thank Him. He is here. 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 Some of you are feeling warmth from the top of your head to the soles of your feet. Some of you are feeling heat in your body in that place where you were praying. Some of you already feel that that pain is gone. Who am I talking to? Who am I talking to? Come here and testify. Come here and speak it. Speak it out. Because we overcome by the blood of the Lamb. And by the word of the testimony. If you feel that pain is gone right now, I want you to come and testify. We're going to give glory to God this morning. We're going to give him glory this morning. We're going to give him glory this morning. Father, I thank you. And it's always the first person that is scared to come. But when, once one person comes and testifies of the healing power of God, then other people's faith rises to another level for them to be able to receive. There's that first person. Come here, Jacinta. Father, I thank you right now. What's been going on with you? Um, I have, they said I had scoliosis and mm. it was bothering me. But it was bothering me. And what happened while we were praying? Um, I didn't feel the need to pray, but when we got done, I, I didn't feel the pain that I normally feel. Touch your toes. Touch your toes. It's gone. It's gone. Come on, touch it again. Do something you could not do before. Father, in the name of Jesus, we glorify you. We glorify you. Father, right now, I thank you for the completion of the work. I thank you for the blood of Jesus. I thank you for the power, the healing power of God. And I thank you even now, Father God, that you're not just addressing, Father God, her body, Father God, but you're addressing internal organs, Father God. I thank you, Father God, that you align everything, Father God, within her body in the name of Jesus. Somebody worship the Lord Jesus. Somebody worship the Lord Jesus. You are our healer. You're our healer. You're our healer. You're our healer. You're our healer. Someone else has a testimony. Come on, let's give glory to God. Let's give glory to God. Let's give him glory. Let's give him glory. Come on, look for that pain. Look for that pain. Look for that pain. I was having excruciating pain in my left knee. And even last night as I was listening to the word of healing and as I was driving, 
I put my hand on my knee and I said, God, I just receive it. I just receive it. And I thank God I have no pain in my left knee this morning. Why? Because we believe the word of God. We don't have to accept it. Come on. I know that there's at least two or three more. What's been going on with you, Missy? I was at a park at the center with my friend or whatever. And I was talking to my friend and she fell down. And she was putting her more weight on me. So I sprained my ankle. And I've been putting on ice on it for like a week or a couple of days. And then when we started praying, like the pain was just gone. Come on, let's keep going with your hands. Put your hands all over the room. Why am I doing this? It's not about tricks. It's not. It's about building faith. Faith delivers to you whatever it is that you're believing for. Your fasting is not in vain. Your prayer is not in vain. Even now, he's still healing. See, what happens is that sometimes people and pastors are afraid to do this because they say, what if nobody responds? What if nobody gets healed? That is not your problem. That is not your issue. Your issue is to release the word of God. There are some of you that are going to realize that the pain is gone when you're heading home. There's going to be some of you that realize tomorrow when you get up, wait a minute, I feel different. There's going to be some of you that even as you go out into the parking lot, you're going to realize that there's something different. Why? Because God's word cannot return void. And when there's a heart that believes by faith, when there's a heart that says, God, your word is true and I receive it right now, then there is change. Come on, one more testimony. Thank you, Lord. Come here, man of God. Father, I thank you. Thank you, Lord. What's been going on with you, sir? Well, I just had surgery on Thursday in my eyes, and I've been treated for glaucoma. And the enemy keeps trying to take my vision. And uh, they always say, well, is it generational? Because my father had it. But uh, I'm not saying, you know, I'm a child of God. That's right. And so, Thursday, I had surgery. So today, he told me, don't do no lift and weight lifting. Don't be standing up and don't be leaning down. But I've been praising God today. Yeah. And I've been praising God. Yeah. Yeah. And I was trying to do it in the So I had surgery in this eye on Thursday. And I've been praying God for my optic nerves not to lose my vision and my optic nerve. And that it get continue to clear, clear up in my eyes. And that I don't go through what my father did. Yeah. You know? And so I'm seeing clear now. Yeah.
hands and worship Jesus. Jesus is big time. I hear the Spirit of the Lord saying to you, man of gosh. I hear the Spirit of the Lord saying to you, align your life in every area with what he's told you to do. Align your life in every area. There are some things that God has been saying, align yourself with me. But you've been afraid to trust him. And he's saying, close every door and watch. I even declare supernatural healing in the eye where there was surgery. I command that all that redness is going to be gone by tomorrow. You're going to wake up tomorrow and your eye will be completely white. And it will be completely restored. See, the signs and the miracles and the power of God has to return to the church because there's a world that is hurting and is broken and is sick and motivational speaking is not going to do it. And an encouraging word is not going to be doing. The kingdom of God is not a kingdom of words. Just let him sit there. Don't even be in a rush to get up. Just, just sit there. As the men of God just cover you in prayer. But the kingdom of God is power. The kingdom of God is power. The kingdom of God is power. The kingdom of God is being able to come in and you are addicted but you leave out. Delivered and set free. Never wanting to smoke another day in your life. Never wanting to drink another day in your life. Never wanting to get high another day in your life. Right now, in the name of Jesus. To every person under the sound of my voice that is addicted to smoking marijuana. That you have been smoking marijuana for whatever reason. I send the way. If you want to be healed and you want to be set free, don't be shamed. And lift your hands to the Lord right now. Just lift your hands straight up. Don't care about what anybody has to say about you. Lift your hands straight up. I speak right now in the name of Jesus. Deliverance in this house. From addiction to marijuana. I speak to your spirit right now. And I command your spirit to be made free right now. In the name of Jesus. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. By the supernatural power. The healing power of Jesus. 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 Address their need right now. Address every place of brokenness. Address it now in the name of Jesus. Address it now in the name of Jesus. And I speak to your body. And I command your body not to crave it. I command your body not to need it. I command your body not to want it. I speak to your spirit. And I command your spirit. Ain't no shame in here. We're going to defeat the enemy. We're going to tear down the works of the enemy. We're going to say, ain't no shame in here. Ain't no shame in here. You have nothing to be ashamed of. Everything that the enemy tries to assign to you. We cast it down right now by the word of faith. And we declare healing in your spirit, your soul, your mind. And your body in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Would you just lift your hands and just worship the Lord, Jesus? Just worship the Lord. Just worship the Lord. Who in this room has been suffering and pain in your legs? Pain in your legs. Come here. Holy Spirit. You are welcome in this place. Father, in the name of Jesus, Teresa has been fighting the good fight of faith for a long time. We command right now the spirit of healing. Touch her legs right now. Touch her legs right now. Every spirit of pain. Be healed in the name of Jesus. Your faith makes you whole. Your faith makes you whole. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus right now. Right now, right now. Teresa, begin to lift your legs up and down. Begin to lift your legs. Begin to lift your legs. The other one. In the name of Jesus. Healing power. Healing power. Healing power. Healing power. Now, we release the word of God. There it is. There it is. There it is. We release the healing power of God. We release the healing power of God. We release the healing power of God. Thank you for your healing. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. She was limping now. She shouted. She was limping, now she's worshiping. She was limping, now she's praising the Lord. Come on, move that camera, Nicole. Let them see the glory of God. Thank you for your glory. Thank you for your glory. Jesus, thank you for your glory. Thank you for your healing power. She was limping when she came up, and now she's made whole. Father, right now, every pain, every pain in her legs, right now, I command that you go now in the name of Jesus. I command that you go now in the name of Jesus. Begin to move your legs. Begin to move your legs. Begin to move your legs. In the name of Jesus, Jesus, come on, bring those knees up, bring those knees up, move those legs, move those legs, come on, move them, move them, in the name of Jesus, receive your healing, receive it now, receive it now, Jesus.
Jesus, you're the healer. Jesus, you're the healer. Jesus, you're the healer. Is it in God? Is it God? Come on. Take those legs. Take those legs. Jesus, we worship you. 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 That's it. Manifestation. 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 The kingdom is a power. The kingdom is a power. The kingdom. And Jesus went to the synagogue and he went to every city and he was healing all those that were afflicted. He was healing all those that were afflicted. He was healing all those that were afflicted of every disease. Oh my God. Jesus. 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 Who has a headache right now? Come here. How long have you had this headache? You had a seizure last week. Your second. And then the seizure. You have a headache now. Have you given your heart to the Lord Jesus? Are you living in obedience? No. Okay, we gotta address that first. Are you ready to go to a new level of obedience in your relationship with God? You think so? You think so? Because even when you're not strong enough, He gives you the strength. If we ask for it, if we desire it. That's why He looked at the man by the pool. He said, Do you want to be made well? And there was another man that Jesus healed. He said, Now go and sit no more. So that sickness doesn't come, so that something worse doesn't come. I don't want to pray for you and you not be ready to surrender your life to Jesus and then something worse come. Yes. Okay. It's, it's, it's real. Mm-hmm. That's real. It's real. Yes. You're ready? Yeah. 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 This, is, this is not about being yeah. perfect. This is not about never making a mistake. It's about surrendering. It's about saying, God, if you will help me. I know that you're committed to helping me. I want to walk out this journey. So let's do that first. Say with the Lord Jesus. I surrender my life to you. Help me to walk in obedience to your will. In Jesus' name. I want to be in line with you. Now lift your hands. Father, as a sign to this amazing woman of God. Right now, God, you know everything that is happening in her body. You know the effects of the seizure. You know the effects of everything that she has gone through. But I speak to this headache, Father God, and let it be gone now as a sign to her that you are real. As a sign of your love for her. Father, I thank you right now that healing virtue is just flowing through her body now from the top of her head to the soles of her feet. God, I thank you. Just liquid love pouring through her body. In the name of Jesus. Is it gone? Come here. Come here. It's not crazy. God is the creator of heaven and earth. To us it's crazy because we don't know him. But if we knew him. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Fill her with the Holy Spirit. Fill her with the Holy Spirit. Fill her with your Holy Spirit. God, that she would never forget this moment. That her life would forever be changed. That her life would forever be changed. Father God, that she would never turn back. But that this would be the day that marks the point of no return for her. Father God, any, Father God, anything God, that is attached to her, that is not in line with your will, break it off. Every relationship, every, every relationship. Father God, that her desires would even align with your perfect will. Father God, that even what she wants would align up with your will. Fill her with us. That she would never forget this day. That she would never forget this day. Fill her with your love. Father God, that she would feel the weight of sin lifted off of her. That she would feel the guilt and the shame lifted off. That she would know what it feels like to be forgiven. And to be made new. Thank you, Father God. 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 Thank you,
you for your healing power.
the Lord Jesus is saying, will somebody be my hand? The Lord Jesus is saying, will somebody go to the hospital? The Lord Jesus is saying, will somebody trust and believe my words? He said, greater works will you do. He said, greater works will you do. He said, faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. It says that he called out the disciples and gave them authority over unclean spirits. See, that's why you can't allow unclean spirits to live in your life. Because you have to be able to be free from them. So that they, Because when they're in you, they have dominion over you. But when you cast them out of your own life, then you're able to activate the authority that God gave you over unclean spirits. Christ in you is the hope of glory. The word of God says that the same spirit that raised Jesus Christ from the dead gives life to your mortal body. That means, why do you think the devil wants to wrap you up in sin? Why do you think he wants to wrap you up in fornication? Why do you think he wants to wrap you up in pornography? Why do you think he wants to wrap you You may not do any of those things, but you may just doubt. You may just be too afraid to say to somebody who is sick, be healed in the name of Jesus. But when that doubt is gone, and when you have confidence in what God has told you, Christina, lived your whole life being rejected. Your whole life. Rejected for this and rejected for that. But God says to you today, the one that has been rejected by all is the one that I accept. The one that has been rejected by all is the one that I accept. God sees your heart and he has given you a pure heart. The word of God says that the pure heart will see God. And you see God. And you hear God. Home and people may think that, well, you may not be able to do this because of your lack of education. You may not be able to do this and do that. But God is saying, I'm raising you up, woman of God. I'm raising you up, woman of God. Speak the words that I give you to speak. Pray for the sick as I tell you to pray for the sick. Promise on my word to those that I tell you to give them a word. God is raising you up to the level and the stature that he calls you to. Even before you experience the rejection. The rejection came as a lie of the enemy to destroy your life. Because he knew how powerful God had called you to be. But he has not been successful. He has not been there. So you shaya.
sweet time. The enemy was saying, you're not worthy. You can't go up there. God can't use you like that. But I'm here to tell you that you have been plagued with sickness your whole life because God has called you to healing. You've been plagued with sickness your whole life. That's why you love medicine so much. That's why you love to study. Because you've been looking for it in the natural. But God is saying, tap into it in the spirit. Tap into it in the spirit. You're worthy because Jesus makes you worthy. And I anoint your hands. I anoint your hands for healing. I anoint your hands for healing. I anoint your hands. I anoint your hands. That even as you work with people that come through your clinic, that even as you strap them into the machine, that they would feel something go through their body. And I hear the Lord saying, He's going to use you to minister to people that are suffering from depression. 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 You're going to see that spirit on people. And you're going to stand against it. And they're not even going to know that you're praying under your breath. And that you're stroking them into those machines to go into the study. As you, as you touch them, just working with them, you'll be releasing the word of God. In your spirit. See, the enemy's had you distracted. But God says you're on assignment. The enemy has had you distracted. But God, has, even the things that happen with your children, they're a distraction. Stop allowing the distractions to get you out of line. Amen? I heard the Spirit of the Lord say she was, she was sitting in her seat. And the voice of the enemy was saying to her, you can't go up there. You're not worthy. It's a lie. It's a lie. God will use each and every person. It doesn't matter if you used to be a drug addict. It doesn't matter if you used to be a pimp. It doesn't matter if you used to be an alcoholic. It doesn't matter if you used to be a whore. It doesn't matter if you were a drug addict. It does not matter who you are. Paul was a murderer. Paul was pursuing the church and killing Christians. And Jesus called him to be the greatest apostle. Oh, he didn't even see Jesus in the flesh. He didn't even walk with Jesus in the flesh. But he received more revelation of who Jesus was. If there was anybody that was unqualified, it was Paul. If there was anybody that was unqualified, was the woman that came with the alabaster box. And people were saying, well, we know for what kind of woman she is. Oh, but Jesus said, you know what? Don't waste your time judging her. Don't wait because she is blessing me. She's anointing me. She understands who I am. And she's preparing me. And everywhere that the gospel is preached, they will talk about this woman. Everywhere where the gospel is, you sit back trying to criticize her because of where she came from. But you don't even know she's not there no more. She's not there no more. She's not who she is. Because she's had an encounter with me. And she may have felt unworthy to bring to him her alabaster box. She may have felt unworthy. She knew those men were going to look at her like she was dirt. But she still came. And she still brought her worship. Why? Because when you encounter Jesus, the real Jesus, I'm not talking about church. I'm not talking about politics. I'm not talking about any of the garbage. I'm talking about the person, Jesus, and the person, the Holy Spirit, and the person, Jehovah, our Father, Jehovah Rapha, Jehovah Nisi, Jehovah Shalom, our peace, Jehovah Sikhanu, Jehovah, our provider. Je Listen, when you encounter him, you don't even care who you used to be. Because he shows you who he's called you to be. And you understand that it's in him. It's because of him that the sick were healed this morning. It's because of him that they are set free this morning. It's because of him that you will step out and be who God has called you to be. Without apology, without fear, without him being intimidated by other people that have been in church longer than you've been. And being intimidated by the ones that have a doctor's degree in theology. What's, what good is a doctor's degree if you don't know God? 
What good is the theology if you don't know Jesus? What good is being able to quote every scripture in the Bible but you don't have a relationship with the person of the Holy Spirit? What good? It profits you nothing to know about somebody. It's different to know about somebody and to know somebody. See, I can, I can read about Obama, but I don't know him. But Michelle knows him. There's a difference. I can know about him, but she knows him. You can know about God, but it's time for you to know him. Everyone in the sound, under the sound of my voice, you are not in right standing with Jesus Christ. That means you don't know if you died right now, if you would be saved, if you would go to heaven. If you are not sure, I need you to raise your hand as high as you can raise it. The greatest miracle, the greatest healing begins with salvation. Stand up to your feet, baby. Stand up to your feet. If you want to give Jesus your heart, stand up to your feet. If you want to give Jesus anyone else, you want to give Jesus, you want to make Jesus the Lord of your life. You want to make Jesus the Lord of your life. Come here so I can pray for you. Come here, young man, so I can pray for you. Miss Kim, please help me. Come here so I can pray for you. The word of God says that today is the day of salvation. Today. Come here, young man. The word of God says that today is the day of salvation. And it doesn't matter how young you are. When you feel God pulling on your heart, you can give him a yes and new life starts right now. Would you lift your hands with me in the presence of God? Would you lift your hands with me? And all of us are going to pray this together. Say with me, Lord Jesus, I come before you. I know that I'm a sinner. I know that I can't make it to heaven without you. I have been living life my own way. Please forgive me. Wash away my sin with your blood. I receive you as my Lord and my Savior. Take control of my life and now fill me with your Holy Spirit. Fill me with your peace. I surrender to you and I give you my life right now because I believe I am saved in Jesus' name. And it's that simple. It's not hard. It's not hard. You have to come into your walk. This is Miss Kim. We have a class that meets every Tuesday just for you. We want to help you grow. She's going to get your information. She's going to follow up with you this week. And I want you to come to class because it's one thing to be born again. You wouldn't take a newborn baby and put him outside and say, go get a job, right? No, we gotta nurse them. And we gotta put the peas in the blender. And we gotta feed them slowly until they get strong enough to walk and to eat on their own. That's what we have to do with your spirit. And we're committed to doing that here at Wayne Fire, okay? Come here, give me a hug. Let's celebrate. Let's celebrate this one here. You can go with me. You can speak go with me. In this glory and in this worship, are you ready to worship the Lord with your giving? Are you ready to worship the Lord with your giving? Are you worship to honor this miracle working God with your offering, with your seed of love? Today is just a reminder. Thank you, Charles. That He is, that God is who He says He is. God says, as I look at this amazing woman of God. I could not have paid her to lie. I could not have paid her to lie and say that her headache was gone if it was not gone. You can look at her and tell she ain't going to front for nobody. She's going to keep it 100. And I thank God for that. Because some of you need to be able to see and recognize, wait a minute. The word of God just may be true. We preach and we sing a whole lot of things that we do not believe. And that's why the world looks at church people and they don't like us because they say we're hypocrites. Because we sing these songs and we preach these messages, but 70% of what we sing and what we preach, we don't believe and people can tell by the way we live. But I believe that God is helping Corey and myself to raise up a people that will be real, that will be full of the power of the Holy Spirit, that will live life with a conviction and a passion, that people will be able to look at our lives and say, wait a minute, these are real 
followers of Jesus Christ. And I can tell by her life. I can tell by his life. I can tell by the way the power of God shows up. I can tell by the way that husband is treating his wife. I can tell by the way that wife is responding to her husband. I can tell by the way they give. I can tell by the way they worship. I can tell by the way they act when they're out in the parking lot. That these people really know Jesus. And when people in the world see that, they will run and say, I want what you have. I want that peace that you have. I want that joy that you have. Because when they see the fruit, they will be convinced that what we sing and what we preach is real. And until then, we just won't be doing this. And they won't be doing this. But when they can see our fruit, they're going to say, I want that. I need that. And you'll be able to share it with them. If you need an envelope to bring to the Lord your love gift, your tithe, and your offering, just lift your hand. This is a part of our worship as well. We believe in giving. Giving is a part of prospering God's way. Giving is a way that we show love to God. When you're in love with that guy or with that girl and you know that Christmas is coming, you take your whole little check and you put a little extra on credit and you go to the mall and you buy up everything in sight. Well, I think she might like this and I think she might like that. And I think he might like why? Because when you love, you give. When you love, you sow. When you love, you share. When you love, oh, baby, you want half of my hamburger? See, but when he's getting on your nerves, you'll be like, don't eat my stuff. <laughs> but when you love, right? You give. When you love, he can have half of your hamburger. When you love, he can have your money. When you love, when you're in love, you give freely. But when you're not in love, you hold back. I declare that there's a people in this house that are in love with Jesus. Understand that Jesus is their source. Understand covenant. Understand being a good steward. Understand holiness. Understand obedience. And understand that God is the God of unlimited supply. I want to raise up a people that have such a strong faith in every area that you will never again suffer regarding your finances with anxiety. I declare that God will help me to raise up a people that believe God's word so tough that never again you will have a sleepless night over something financial that you may not have at the moment, understanding that because of your covenant and because of your life of obedience and because of your good stewardship, even if it's not here right now, it's on the way. And that you will see it manifest and work for you over and over and over again. To the point that no matter if an angel shows up and says to you, tithing does not work. You will look at that angel and say, you are lying. You must be a demon clothed as an angel. Because I've seen God's word work for me. Are you seeing it work for you? And we declare, you're going to be in that house in about 15 days, right? That money is already here. It's already manifested. And we receive it in the name of Jesus. Where's your husband? Just a few. They've only been here about what? Six weeks? Eight weeks. And when they came, I remember one of the first services they came. And the word of God, gave, God gave them a word that they were going to be going into their house. They moved here recently from another city. And they've been believing God and they've been waiting for God to reveal to them this house that they're going into. And they have been listening to the word and they came and they brought an offering. And they said, we have come to the point to realize that God is waiting aligned before we could make a move. They said, but we realize that our faith has to move first and then we'll see God move. So they took a step of faith and they put a bid on a house, an offer on a house. And they emptied out all of their savings account to put the money on the house. And the next day they let them know the house belongs to them. And they said to them, you have 15 days to come up with the rest of the money for your first mortgage. And as she shouted right now, she shouted because it's already done. She moved here with her husband by faith. She moved here not knowing where she was coming. They left their home like Abraham left their home, not knowing where they were going. But they come into a land of provision. They come into a land of plenty. They come into a land of overflow. Because whenever you obey God, you step into overflow. Whenever you obey God, you step into overflow. We rejoice with her. We declare the manifestation. So God of the overflow. 
You're not a victim. You're not a victim to the employer. You're not a victim to the job. You're not a victim to anything and anyone. You and God are your own boss. Even when you work for somebody, God is your big boss. So don't you let them make you afraid. When they start talking about they laying off and they doing this and they doing that. Okay, amen, praise God. And keep it moving. Because God is your source. Somebody say, God is my source. God is my source. Your job is not your source. Your job simply gives you seed to sow. That's it. Your job gives you seed to sow so that you can activate the promises. Your job gives you seed to sow to begin the cycle of harvest. Your job is not your harvest. Your job is your seed. Your weekly check is not your harvest. It's nothing but your seed in order to begin, begin, begin the cycle of overflow in your life. And I'm telling you, when this word comes alive in your heart, you will realize it will never be broken again. I will never be broke again. I will never be broke again. Because God gives you the power to make wealth. Come on, if you brought to the Lord your time and your offering this morning, I want you to stand up to your feet if you gave our phone. We have a text to give system here at Great Fire Church. It looks so pretty in your yellow dress. It looks like sunshine. Miss Gwen, well, she, she brought the sunshine. I'm going to play that Clark Sister song in a minute. You brought the sunshine, Miss Gwen. If you gave by phone, you can text Rainfire to 77977. You can give on the website rainfirechurch.org. And I'm starting to understand the authority breaking down and the power that I have in the things that I say as a mouthpiece of God because of the office that I stand in as a pastor. And as we have been in this series, Prosper God's Way, I have been noticing that there has been a greater commitment and there has been a greater consistency in this church, not just in your tithe, but in your offering. Many of you have taken God at his word and you're not allowing one service to go by without bringing to God something. It is all, it's, it's, it's amazing. When we go through the reports and we see one dollar, fifty cents, ten dollars, twenty, and it's not even your tithe, it's your offering. That means somebody is saying, God, I believe your word, and I'm gonna go above and beyond. And I know that as soon as my seed leaves my hand, that overflow is already on the way back to me, and it will show up right when I need it, because God, you are the God of the supply. Even as you give now, think back to the children of Israel. And as they went through the desert for 40 years, their clothes grew with them. Their shoes grew with them. Manna came down from heaven. Are you kidding me? You don't think that God can touch somebody's heart to give you that thing that you need? You don't think that God can touch somebody? The word of God says, give, and it shall be given unto you. Pressed down, shaken together, running over. Will men give unto your bosom? As soon as you release your offering, even today, God is already tapping on the heart of somebody that is preparing something to get it back to you. Because that's how God works. And the kingdom of God works. That's, that's why I don't have to come in here and I don't have to say, if you give God an offering of $100, God's going to do this. And I don't have to say, if you give God an offering of $1,000, God is going to do this. All I have to say is, this is what God said. This is what his word said. He said he will open up the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing that you have no room to receive. He said that he would bless the work of your hands. He said that he would command the blessing upon your storehouses. That's what he said. So in the same way that you have faith to be saved and in the same way that you have faith to be healed and to remain healed, it's the same way that you activate your faith to know that you do not have to ever live in lack. And to be free that even if your bank account is $1.99, that you don't even have to bat an eyelash and you can just rejoice saying, it's on the way. It's already on the way because I'm in covenant. It's already on the way because I know who God is. It's already on the way because my life is in obedience to the Father. It's already on the way. And you even rejoice and you shout like the woman of God shouted. And so by the time the, 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 manif- the physical manifestation comes, you chill because you already shouted. I knew you were coming. Thank you for arriving on time. Father, we bless our seed, those that have given online, those that have given on their phone, those that bring to you a check or write on here their debit account information. God, these are natural things that we do, but they have supernatural power. They have spiritual 
power. And I thank you, Father God, that even in this season, I am declaring, Father God, over every seed that is sown in this season, that there would be a quick turnaround to the harvest so your people would be encouraged to believe and to line themselves up with your word. God, I thank you that you teach us that it's not about the amount, but it's about obedience and it's about consistency and it's about seeing God do what he said he would do. The word of the Lord to you this morning is learn to celebrate the little harvest. Look at me. Learn to celebrate the little harvest. Yeah. When you walk down the street and you come across five dollars, don't just look at it as coincidence. Say, God, I thank you. I had somebody the other day who sent me a text. They were completely freaked out because they went to an, an ATM and they put in their information and the ATM accidentally gave them an extra $50 and she is stressing trying to figure out how to get it back to the company because it was a random ATM that was in a convenience store. It wasn't at a bank and there wasn't somebody that she could go to. So she's freaking out. Why is this ATM giving me extra money? The favor of the Lord is so strong on her that now the machines are even giving her more than what they're supposed to give her. I said, girl, don't worry about it. Just go back and see if there's a phone number on the machine somewhere and try to call them and see if you can make it right. Just put it to the side and try to figure it out. But I'm telling you, God can get to you whatever it is that he needs to get to you. So learn to rejoice in the little miracles. And understand, oh, I found this five dollars. You just gave me more seed to sow. So I'm gonna take my ten percent and I'm gonna put it in the kingdom. And you keep what? Releasing your seed and releasing your faith and releasing your seed and releasing your faith. And you will see God do it each and every time. So we bless our seed today and we release it by faith. And as we put it in the bucket, we say, Thank God for the overflow. In Jesus' name. Amen. I release you to come. I put you in the hands of the ushers. Please follow their instructions. I rejoice in the overflow. Come on, say it. I rejoice in the overflow. Come on, begin to rejoice in the overflow today. Men and women of God that are faithful to God in your life, faithful to God in your obedience, rejoice in the overflow. Rejoice in the provision of God. Rejoice in the covenant of God. Rejoice that God is not going to ask you to give him anything that he is not committed to multiplying and giving back to you because he is a loving father. He is a loving God and he loves you. And we love you. We thank you for being with us every Sunday and every Tuesday and every Friday morning for the power prayer call. God is a good God. Do you feel refreshed this morning? Do you feel full of joy this morning? Are you healed this morning? Are you going to hold on to that healing? Come on, stand up to your feet. As we get ready to go. Learn to actively hold on by faith to everything that God says belongs to you. Yes. Did you hear me? Everything that God says belongs to you. Don't let it go. And even in the moments where it seems like it's slipping out of your grasp. Uh-uh. God's word says that I'm blessed. God's word says that I'm the head and I'm not the tail. God's word says that he has called me to be a prophetic voice to my generation. And the devil will tell you, you're a nobody. You can't make a difference. Ah, uh -uh, you're a liar. And say it out loud. Father, I bless the sons and daughters that you have given us. I thank you because they are taking you at your word. I thank you that this is a house that is full of healing. I thank you that this is a house full of provision. I thank you that this is a house full of overflow. I thank you, Father God, that this is a house full of peace and sanity. I thank you, Father God, that there is no division in this house. There is no murmuring in this house. Father, I thank you, God, that whenever somebody has an ought against someone else, God, that they quickly make it right. I thank you, Father God, that any serpent from hell that would try to bring division, Father God, or chaos, or pluck people out of their correct place, I bind you in the name of Jesus, and I declare that people will remain planted in the house of God, and they will not allow themselves to be sifted by the enemy. I thank you for consistency. I thank you for faith. I thank you for prayer warriors. I thank you for evangelists. I thank you for teachers. I thank you, Father God, for prophets. I thank you, Father God, for those that will embrace the call of God on their life with boldness and with confidence. And I declare in this house, God, long life, health, strength, and prosperity upon your people. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen? Amen. Amen. Make sure you hug someone close to you. Thank you for being here. Thank you for coming with an open heart. Periscope. I love you. I bless you.